are we going to do about it? Um, a lot of people are walking, you know, decide to take the, the courageous step in KL and then asking us, what are we going to do about it? So some groups started out with a very small number of people. I remember K uh, New York started with two people. They were wondering, like, should we do it at all? Should we come out? It's only me and my girlfriend. Like, <laughs> okay? And then, you know, there are a lot of support asking people, let's just go out. I mean, there should be a lot of people who might be interested. Um, we will just come out and be counted. At the end of the day, I mean, we are in a you know pretty safe environment, pretty good environment. Um, we are, you know, we're free to do what we want. And, and but then, so what we do today, you know, you know, some people will say we don't really make real change back in Malaysia, but we do show that we know what's going on. What we can do is when we go back visit, when we talk to friends, talk to people, um, we can tell them of the situations, the things that are going on in, back in Malaysia. And also you can you know, talk to your family, um, the people who will eventually, who are in Malaysia, who are really making the decisions, who are really talking to, uh, understanding what's going on. Um, and they are the ones who eventually get to vote and all of that. I mean, we can ask for our power to uh, vote in an election, but then, you know, go we'll see what that happens. That's part of uh, uh, the, uh, the election electoral changes that we're asking for. Um, we'll, we'll see what, when, when and uh, if that will happen. So, um, and so, main point to take away is that we started small and everyone has, can do a little bit um, to bring change. So, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, just uh, pass back to Colin. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Chong Pin. I have to say he's very humble, but you know it, it really takes one person to really make a big push, and he's done a lot of work to try to organize and struggle because everybody's busy, he's very busy, and all that. So thank you again, Chong Pin. Big hand for him. Um, as Chong Pin has mentioned, that this, this began with one or two people in different parts of the world. Um, before we start about giving the updates on what's been happening in KL, I just want so want to give some of the inspiring things. We are part of a global per se, per se global as we've been calling it. There's an international steering committee, very loose steering group uh, that Tompe and myself are part of. They've been sharing, I don't know, a few thousand emails the last one or two weeks going back and forth trying to arrange this around the world. Uh, it began in New Zealand about, um, like I think about 18 hours ago. Uh, was the first event, small event in Wellington. Uh, and then Australia started about one or two hours later and Australia really took off. There were uh, around four to five hundred people in Sydney, around three to four hundred in Adelaide. And then Melbourne, Melbourne had more than 750 people in Melbourne. They had a, a very big gathering there, so very inspiring for all of us. And then that has continued. In London, about six or seven hours ago in London, there were another 500, four, 500 people gathered there. Uh, and then all around the country uh, this morning also, and in fact, about one or two hours ago, New York began their rally in New York, that they're going straight to the high com in, in New York. Uh, so they have also uh, begun and they started putting pictures up already. So if you have your phones, you can start putting pictures up to show that we are also doing it. Um, and, and that's that's been going on, and of course, we on the Pacific Coast, uh, Portland, LA, and us here in San Francisco, we are the last ones to do it around the world. So we are closing the, the long day that has been the 9th of July today around the world uh, in solidarity with our brothers and sisters and our families back home in KL uh, that have been experiencing this. So what actually has been going on in KL? We wanted to give a report as much as we can this morning about that. And by the way, my name is Colin, I'm from Ipo. I was uh, involved in uh, Operasi Lalang, well, I'm not involved in <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was a student in KDU, uh, in College Damansar Utama in, uh, in the late 80s when Operasi Lalang came down and I was shocked at how much power the government has just to crush people just gathering to say we want more democracy and we want uh, fair uh, fairness and, and equality uh, and fair treatment. So that's, it's been inspiring to see some of the things that has been continuing to happen in KL and around Malaysia. Earlier this, uh, as you know, Perse began in 2007 uh, with a march calling for fair 
and clean elections for the 2008 elections. And of course, that was very significant. Uh, that was the beginning of the birthday march that happened in 2007. This year, uh, we know that even though the elections are probably not due till about 2013, uh, the government might call for elections as soon as next year. So, you know how in Malaysia they can call for elections and it can happen very quickly. Uh, snap elections happen all the time. So, one of the things that Versailles has been trying to do, the steering committee and all the people involved in Versailles, is to try and say that we want to organize something now to after, especially after the Sarawak elections a couple of months ago, after that we said we need some really proper, good, clean elections. That's all we're asking for. And the demands you'll see that we'll read up today is just simple things, just basic, simple requirements in terms of clean and fair elections. Um, but however, Bursa has been deemed illegal by the, the government uh, and has been really shut down. There have been arrests being made even last week in terms of some of the people involved in Bursa. After a lot of going back and forth trying to negotiate with the government, with the police, uh, there was a big march plan to happen today to go to the Istana Negara to submit a memorandum to the Agong. Uh, however, earlier this week on Monday, the Agong uh, called Berse, uh, recognized Berse as a legitimate civil society movement, called Berse and asked them for a meeting. So three members of the Berse steering committee, uh, led by Dr. Ambiga, uh, went to meet with the Agong. Uh, on a Monday, during the negotiation with the Agong, the Agong uh, recognized Per Se and said that, well, instead of doing a march on the street, why don't you do a big rally in one of the stadiums? So that was agreed upon by Per Se. So this was something that the Agong asked for. It was agreed by Per Se, and Per Se then said that they would like to do it in Stadium Merdeka. Of course, Stadium Merdeka being very significant for all of them. Uh, and this is something that also the government and the police have been saying that if Versailles changes their march to um, a rally in the stadium, that they will issue a permit and that would be better as a compromise. However, when Versailles issued this statement on Tuesday that they would like to have them the uh, rally in Stadium Merdeka on the 9th of July, um, the, the government led by uh, Prime Minister Najib uh, said that they would leave this in the hands of the police. Uh, and during that time, the police went back and forth with them. And finally, on Wednesday morning, our time, uh, the police uh, issued a statement that the permit was denied. Uh, even after the government had said that they would issue a permit and they would allow this to happen in a stadium. So the permit was denied and the government again said that the rally would be illegal. So in spite of what the Agong has said, recognizing Berse and recognizing that if we have this uh, rally in the stadiums, in one of the stadiums, that this will be a good compromise. However, the government has said this is illegal and that it would not uh, would prevent the rally from happening. So beginning yesterday, uh, in uh, our time late yesterday and early on uh, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, around KL, KL has been completely shut down by different forms of the FRU, the Federal Reserve Union, different police, police tanks, and different other groups like that. Uh, KL Central, a lot of the LRT has been shut down. Uh, people have been prevented from going in. However, people have still found their ways in. On 8 a.m. KL time this morning, around 1,000 people had already gathered in Masjid Jame, in Masjid Negara, another 500 to another 1,000 people. 8 a.m. in the morning, they were gathering because the rally was supposed to happen at 2 p.m. 8 a.m. they're already gathering. Uh, in Sogo area, uh, the police were also gathering. There was around 100 police personnel, 10 police trucks, and a water cannon. In Datar, Mardeka was completely closed off, completely cordoned off. The roads, all the roads leading to Stadium Mardeka were completely blocked off with barbed wire, completely shut down. By, and then all around, the, the, all around KL, in different, different pockets, police started randomly arresting different people. If you have a yellow t-shirt, even in your backpack, if you're, carrying, if you're not wearing it, if you're just carrying it, they will arrest you. If you're going somewhere, they said you cannot go, they will straight away arrest you. By 12 o'clock noon, KL time, the police reported 450 <laughs> people were already arrested all over the city. By 1 o'clock, 3,000 people were gathering in Patali.